what can we learn from Karl Marx right now? What, what policy changes, what different directions should the, the United States government, the Cameron government in the UK um, be making from his analysis having been proven or disproven in some ways over, over this last century and a half or so? Uh, I think what they can certainly take from him is the analysis of the crisis and the steps out of the crisis, which would include uh, a huge stimulus to demand. It would also include uh, real investment in um, the technologies of the future and in renewable technologies. Uh, I think, in a way, Marx went beyond Keynes, uh, whose analysis of an underconsumption crisis is rather similar to Marx's overproduction uh, analysis. Uh, but Marx has more of an emphasis on the need for public entrepreneurialism, for public agencies to begin taking steps. Uh, and um, I think that that is almost certainly what is required. In the, in the 30s, you've got dramatic developments like the TVA, uh, for example, a massive hydroelectric uh, project which generated income and also, of course, massive amounts of electricity. Uh, and uh, reasonably renewable uh, power. Uh, and that was a signature program of the New Deal. Ridiculous to say, inspired by Karl Marx, but uh, actually it was congruent with his thought. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, American Marxists did very much support the New Deal. Uh, however, those who interpreted Marx to mean that a command economy would work well uh, have been disproved. And the Soviet economy, as we know, uh, collapsed, uh, but uh, we see other countries like China have actually managed to bring about some sort of uh, uh, dramatic economic development. Uh, and we, we find that forms of public entrepreneurialism, although in battle, do still exist in China. In China, uh, we find that um, the banks are still publicly owned, and we find the government carried out a very firm policy of uh, stimulus on a much larger scale than the very timid policy here in the United States uh, or in my own country in Britain. Uh, and uh, so one can see that there is a, an element of great economic radicalism there. And in other countries like uh, Taiwan, Brazil, we find public entrepreneurialism is an important part of the mix. Uh, investment in high tech for example, in Taiwan's science parks or in Brazil, in Embrapa, the Agricultural Research Institute. In both cases, public agencies have helped to produce, uh, to make those countries the main world producer uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the lines of production that they chose. And we've seen it here in the United States too. Uh, during the midst of the crisis, uh, General Motors uh, went bankrupt and had to be taken over by the state. And it, under public ownership, it's been nursed back to health, and it's producing this new electronic car, the, the Volt. Uh, uh, I'm not saying everything's perfect with the policy of that, uh, that, that, uh, the, the US administration. There should have been much more. Uh, and um, uh, American workers certainly deserve more efforts made uh, to provide good jobs for them, uh, not just second-rate jobs uh, in the service sector but also jobs in the high-tech sector and in manufacturing and uh, jobs with uh, proper guarantees and with social provision, which should be uh, general. Um, I, I think it's very important that the social security, for example, that that program, which has been such a huge success, that it should be maintained and expanded and properly funded, which will be a very sensitive issue coming up because uh, the Obama administration has paid for its recent stimulus by cutting right back on the, social, on the payroll tax, which is the contribution to Social Security. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fine. Uh, it's helped to uh, lower labor costs, helped to raise employment. That's all good. Uh, uh, but it's got to make sure that the finances of Social Security are safe. And that probably should mean that they should raise the cap on contributions to Social Security. It stops now at about $100,000 income a year, and it should be raised to compensate for the fact that it's been cut back at lower levels. Yeah. Uh, now, these seem like you know, quite 
technical issues, but they're not. They're very important to the lives of uh, tens of millions of Americans and uh, of, of hundreds or thousands of millions throughout the world. Chinese workers deserve a better deal. They deserve better wages, and they deserve what would be even, even more important, uh, they deserve good social security, uh, uh, and that would mean they'd save less and do less to create the problem of low demand. Very interesting. Robin Blackburn, thank you so much for being with us tonight. This is fascinating. Thank you.